Okay, today is part three of my series for beginning photographers who just got the Olympus EM10 Mark II. Okay, so for part three, we're going to be covering uh, exposure compensation. And if you haven't seen part one and two yet, it's okay. Um, exposure compensation can really be sort of its own module. Okay, but I will be picking up where we left off and using all of the settings we've done in part one and part two. And I've programmed those into function three, so that's where we're going to be starting at. And essentially, we're in aperture priority with auto ISO, and the shutter speed will be controlled by the camera as well to acquire the exposure. Okay, so what is exposure compensation? Basically, you're just asking the camera to make the picture a little brighter or a little darker than what it thinks should be the proper exposure. And that's all it is, okay? Um, and it's controlled by the front dial, okay? You just rotate it clockwise to make the picture a little brighter, and then you rotate it counterclockwise to make the picture a little darker. Um, and, and it's as simple as that. And exposure compensation is really, really very powerful because it's, it's something that, um, and, and that's the reason I want to make it part three, is because I want you to get started using exposure compensation as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, so what kind of things can you use exposure compensation for? Um, basically, it solves a lot of photographic problems when you take a picture. Um, it also helps you to be a little bit more creative. And um, <clears throat> that being said, though, it also introduces some of its own problems or challenges. So we'll discuss those as well. Okay, but the most common problem that I think exposure compensation can solve is, uh, you know, strong backlighting. So think of a scene where... You know, you have your friends sitting out on a rock and, and there's this beautiful sunset behind them and you take a picture and they're too dark. You know, your friend is too dark. And, and I see this all the time when I'm out, you know, and I'm sure you have. People are taking their pictures with the little iPhones and, and they look at it and like, oh, you're too dark. I can't see you. <laughs> right. And they try again and again. And they still can't get it right. Um, but to be honest, even this camera would probably give you the same result. The person is just going to be too dark, you know. Uh, you know, based on the default settings without getting carried away with uh, metering, spot metering, and uh, bracketing, you know, and flash. There's all kinds of ways to solve that kind of photographic challenge. But the easiest way, okay, as a beginning photographer is just doing exposure compensation. Okay, so I've kind of set up a little studio here to try to demonstrate how to use exposure compensation. And uh, we'll go through a few examples, and then we'll talk about some of the challenges or problems that exposure compensation can bring along with it. Okay. Okay, so taking a look at that, this scene, it's, um, you know, it's a very easy picture to take for just about any camera. The lighting's pretty well, even across the frame, you know, mainly because it's inside the softbox. But, uh, you know, this, this is the kind of picture I think... Um, you know any camera could take so let's just take a picture here and what I see on the back of the live view should represent pretty much the image I just took and if I press the play button to take a look and of course it does um, but let's look at some of the information on the back of the live view okay because this is uh, going to be more important later we have our ISO number up here it's at ISO auto 200 we have our shutter speed at 1 1 25th of a second we have our aperture fixed at f1.7, and then we have our EV meter here at 0.0. .0. And next to it, we have our EV meter graph, okay? So what the camera's telling me is that, you know, it was able to get this exposure and set the settings with no problem, okay? Just, just take the picture. We're good, <laughs> okay? So this is the baseline exposure that we're going to be adjusting from. So if I wanted to make this picture a little bit brighter, um, all I'd have to do is adjust the exposure compensation by turning the front dial. Now look at the EV meter. See, now we're at plus one. And all that means is that plus one is equivalent to one stop of light. And that's true for every camera that has exposure compensation. Each whole number is a stop of light, okay? Plus two is two stops of light. and you know, I, I don't want to open up this can of worms quite yet, but it's important you understand what a stop of light is, okay? One stop of light is two times brighter than the zero that we started at. Two stops of light 
would be four times brighter, and then three stops would be eight times brighter. So you multiply by two each time you move up in the uh, EV scale. Okay, and that's all I'm going to talk about that for now. We'll get more into that later when we start talking about exposure and histograms and bracketing, etc. But for exposure compensation, just know that positive numbers are brighter, negative numbers um, inversely are darker. Okay, so if I wanted to make this scene two stops brighter or two EV according to the meter here, all I have to do is hit the shutter button, you know, take the picture, and again, what I see here on the live view should be very representative of the picture I just took, right? And if I push play, hence it is, okay? And I can feel confident in that again because the settings here, ISO is at 600, shutter speed's at 80, fixed aperture, plus 2 EV, and then also you see a little graphical representation down here of the EV uh, scale. And more importantly, nothing is blinking. So what the camera again is telling me is that everything's fine. You know, just take the picture. You're good. Okay. So the camera's, you know, still doing most of the heavy lifting by adjusting the ISO and the uh, shutter speed. All we've done is fix the aperture and then dialed in some exposure compensation. So exposure compensation is a very easy way to make adjustments to the, the, the image without getting too complicated with, you know, adjusting ISO and shutter speed and aperture. Okay, now let's introduce, uh, you know, a more challenging uh, kind of picture, okay? So all I have to do is add some uh, backlighting. Okay, now look at this picture. And, you know, when you look at it, it's actually not bad, right? I kind of like this picture, but, you know, Paulina here, my model, is not properly exposed. She's a little bit dark. And, again, it would be very easy to fix with just a little exposure compensation. All we have to do pretty much the same thing. Let's look at one stop. Let's look at two stops or plus two. Plus two looks about right. Maybe we'll do plus three. So we're at plus two and a third stops brighter than we were at the base exposure. And again, I'm going to be looking at the live view to check for the ISO, the shutter speed, aperture, and the scale to make sure nothing is blinking. And again, that tells me that what I see in the live view should represent the final image. So let's take a picture here. And if I hit the play button, and yeah, what I saw in the live view is exactly what I got for this image. Okay. And alternatively, if I wanted to get a little bit creative, because I mentioned, you know, you can use exposure compensation to be a little more creative. I could dial in some negative exposure to get more of a silhouette. So at minus one stop, that looks pretty good. Let's try that. Or minus one EV, okay, and take a picture here. And uh, again, nothing is blinking. So what I saw in the live view should be what I get as the final image, and it is. So. Um, that's how you can kind of use exposure compensation. So I want you to go out and kind of practice doing plus and minus exposure compensation based on the scene that you're looking at. Because you'll know your subject pretty well and you'll be able to adjust it uh, to get either a better exposure in your, you know, in our opinion, right? Or a more creative uh, choice. Okay, so let's talk about some challenges though or some problems that exposure compensation can kind of introduce in your photography. So we'll go back to zero. Okay, and if I dial in, let's say I needed to go plus three. We're still good. ISO 200, shutter speed, one two hundredth of a second. Nothing here blinking. But as soon as I go past plus three EV, you'll notice down here that the EV scale has started blinking. And what that means is that what's on the back of the live view no longer represents the final image, okay? Because something is blinking here, something's not right. But specifically in this case, the live view cannot show you uh, a representation of the final image when you go beyond plus or minus three EV, okay? So to illustrate this, we'll go all the way to plus five. And, you know, take a look at this live view. You know, we can see her pretty clearly. And take a picture. Now let's look at the final image. 
as you can see it's much much brighter okay than what was on the back of the live view hence this okay um, so just be aware of that and the same thing happens when you go negative okay if you go minus 5 EV or 4 EV you can see this starts blinking right but notice when I go past minus 3 EV on the scale here not only is the uh, EV meter scale blinking but also the ISO and the shutter speed okay so let's back this off a little bit now the shutter speed has stopped blinking but the ISO is still blinking okay so minus one and a third EV is about the maximum I can go if I want to see what the exposure is going to look like in live view once I start going beyond that and even though the EV meter scale is not blinking something else is okay and again if I want to illustrate this let's go minus five EV take a picture and if you're looking at the back of the screen you know we can still see a very very faint outline of Paulina here and some sky but let's look at the actual picture okay we can see more outline in the rocks we see a little bit more of the sky here and we can kind of make out a little bit more of um, Paulina here right so what's on the back of the screen is not representative of the final image okay and that's because we have gone we have hit the limits of what the camera camera is capable of in terms of lowering the ISO and shutter speed okay and we can compensate for that using our aperture okay in this case because we're wide open right now at f1.7 all I have to do is dial in by using the rear dial a higher f-stop and by that I mean we're closing the aperture to let less light in and it looks like right around f9 the two uh, the ISO and the shutter speed have stopped blink blinking however the EV meter is still blinking telling me that what I'm seeing on the back of the screen is not representative of the final image so let's go back to 3 EV minus 3 EV and open the lens back up until we get to a limit here of ISO 200 1 4000 so when I take a picture now this should be representative of the final image which is you know very faint outline highlight here along the edges and just a little bit of sky here and if we look at the final image now now it matches okay um, and I could even dial in you know open wide you know open back oops I'm sorry go all the way back wide open f1.7 and you'll see that these things will start blinking but then I can adjust the exposure compensation and get back to the, the base default exposure okay so like I said go out and practice okay but be aware of what the live view is telling you okay the information here whether ISO is blinking shutter speed or even the EV scale before you take the picture because it it'll tell you if what you see is going to represent the final image now I go beyond you know plus or minus 3 EV all the time in my professional work uh, and you'll get a feel for doing that yourself as we move along and and um, but I want you to practice using the exposure compensation so when we get to bracketing and we get to um, you know off-camera flash and all these other topics um, all of these things will make a little more sense as we go along and you'll really appreciate some of the features built into this camera okay so that's you know operationally some of the challenges that uh, exposure compensation can bring but there's one other one and you may have already noticed it okay when we go up to say plus 3 EV let's say we like the exposure of Paulina at plus 3 EV the problem is we've now blown out most of the sky right it's going to be almost completely white and there's not going to be any hope of recovering that really okay and 
honestly, that's kind of unavoidable with exposure compensation, if that's your only tool, okay, or your only technique. So that's why we have to get into uh, multiple exposures. But I did uh, suggest the solution to you in part two with HDR, okay? So let's go back to zero EV and click the HDR button, which I programmed the function one from part two. And uh, let's take a picture like this, okay? So what it's doing, and this is just to get your feet wet in exposure bracketing, what it did is took four pictures at different exposures and then blended them together for you. Okay, and let's take a look at that. And that, that didn't do a bad job. If we kind of punch in a little bit, we can see Paulina's, you know, a little dark, but fairly well exposed. The highlights are not blown out and the shadows are kind of brought up. Now, what's kind of interesting is you can also do exposure compensation combined with HDR, okay? So let's say I want Paulina to be a little brighter. Let's try one and a third uh, stops or EV. Take a picture there. Let's see how we did here, okay? And as you can see, the highlights are not quite as blown out. The shadows are definitely, you know, brought up. And Pauline is about one and a third stop brighter. So start using HDR and exposure compensation together. Again, just to kind of get your feet wet, take some better pictures, you know. Um, and then think about what the camera's doing, okay? Because later you're going to learn to control the camera and do an even better job than the built-in HDR function. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it uh, for part four. Um, that's exposure compensation in a nutshell. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, I'll be able to get part four out. I have some ideas about what I want to do. But, you know, leave some feedback below in the comments um, and uh, suggestions of things you'd like to see in the future. Uh, you know, the feedback so far has been, you know, great. And I really appreciate that. Um, it's been very kind and there's been some very good ideas there. So. Uh, continue to do that for me and uh, it's really inspired me to make more and more videos like this for you so hit subscribe if you'd like to see more um, either way hopefully we'll see you again soon